Hello, you lovely ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Brightworks. I hope you'll grab a drink, grab a snack, and sit with me as we watch some noobs learn how to play Flats and Forests. One of my favorite maps of all time, certainly one of the maps ever. <laughs> Everyone has feelings about this map. Some have good feelings, others have bad feelings. And if that doesn't just sum up the entire sphere of possible feelings, I don't know what does. Today we're going to be watching some uh, middle of the road true skill players guiding their lower true skill uh, learning, learning partners here <laughs> and trying to guide them to victory on Flats and Forest. As far as complexity, this is not the map to go for. Uh, if you're looking for the most dynamically interesting map, it's definitely very plain, but not plain. It's not boring plain. It's just a plain. It's a flat plain. Uh, and you can see that there's very little slopes here. There's some hills uh, and there's some, some forests as you might expect. But uh, for the most part, it's a big open field, which does mean that you get to learn a lot about raiding units. You get to learn a lot about static defensive lines versus uh, fire bases. So uh, that's what Barcast TV calls them, and I think that's a great term. But anyway, let's meet our uh, our leaders today. Going to be guiding their their nooblings to victory here, spawning on the western side. We have Beard Red Color, or no, 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 sorry, Bearded Coder. Whole uh, whole dyslexia moment there. <laughs> Bearded Coder, we've seen in a couple casts before, and they're going to be trying to lead their team to victory here, representing their team with this bright, brilliant red color. Super excited to see what they go for. We've already got the bot lab out and about. We're building some constructor bots. Very nice. You need a lot of those on this map because there's so much area to cover. We'll talk about that a little bit more in detail here after we meet our blue team leader spawning on the eastern side, representing the blue team. We have Malboro. Malboro, the uh, the delicious, the satisfying, the tasty, the uh, can't have too many, or I start making bad decisions. Going to be representing the blue team here today. <laughs> and, uh, also going for a bot lab, also an Armada player, looking very, very similar to the bearded coder in that respect. So it's going to be an interesting clash to watch these two go against each other, although they aren't quite in line with each other. They're sort of next door neighbors. Uh, adjacent next door. It's sort of like across the street and one house over. You know who I'm talking about. You look out your window and you'll probably see him. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe you'll maybe you'll see nobody. I don't know where you live. Maybe you live in the suburb suburban middle of nowhere. <laughs> Anyways, Marlboro going to be pushing forward here. Uh, what was I going to talk about? Oh yes, the metal, metal disbursement on this map. So you can see that all of the metal spots are exactly the same value. So it's much more about contesting big swaths of area, like con contesting these metal rich areas as opposed to a specific metal point. And that does make things interesting because it means that you want to build static defensive lines and static defensive uh, fort fortified fronts rather than, than specific fortified points. So less gauntlets, less, less agitators, more light laser turrets, heavy laser turrets, that sort of thing along big big lines of defense. Really interesting to see, and I think uh, I think I love that part of Flats and Forests. I'm trying to see who's gonna get the first unit out. I, I think Globule, who, by the way, epic name, really like that one, just, just really sticks in the throat way longer than it should. Globule had the first tick out on the field that I saw, but it hasn't been aggressive yet, so I'm, I'm hard pressed to call that the first unit out on the field. Uh, frankly speaking, none of these players are really going for too much aggression here. I think I'd love to see a little bit more. Maybe an area that people might be willing to improve their game on. Maybe unfamiliar with this map, don't want to risk anything, but I would certainly love to see, at the very least, out of every Armada commander, at least three ticks right off the start of the game. See what damage they can do across the map. At the very least, you're going to find some commanders or maybe some units, and you'll know roughly where people are. But who you, you never know, you might absolutely devastate someone's economy, and that's going to be absolutely phenomenal here. This brown player has been left with a tremendous amount of metal nodes back here. I'm not sure what exactly happened that skewed the spot starts so interestingly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, usually there's more players down here. I'm not sure exactly what happened there. Um, but either way, pet C is, or P at C. <laughs> Maybe it's P, etc., or... P at all C. <laughs> or maybe it's just Pet C and I'm reading into things a little too much here. But either way, Pet C is going to be in charge of this bottom lane and they are going to be up two against one. So that's going to be interesting. We'll probably have to see Bob the Builder sort of shift down, take over control of this half of this little hill. We're going to have to see Bearded Coder shifting down as well. Uh, this is going to be interesting. We're, we're definitely going to have a little bit of an incongruity here, especially because we do have 
Yeah, we have a 2v, 2v2 up here. We have a, uh, I guess a 1v1 across this lane. Although, oh, there's a player back here. Oh, this is interesting. So we've gone for nine solar panels, exhausting our stores of metal. We we have we have 1,350 metal in T1 solar. We are using that to convert into energy, so that is nice. At the very least, we're not wasting the energy. I can appreciate that. We're 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 still thinking though. Vertec definitely on the rise. A few years out, maybe from the uh, the Beyond All Reasons World Championships, but definitely warning fast. Commander sacrifice down here. We are already on T2. Wow, that was extremely quick. We've been teching enthusiastically here, which is quite nice. Uh, hopefully T2 just gets handed out to the whole team. If we're going to tech up this fast with this little units, especially on this map, I really, really hope that we're going to see some T2 out. Are we moving in to steal this commander medal? Um, that's not nice. Did we agree to this in chat somehow? <laughs> we definitely shouldn't be... Uh, oh, we're starting a heavy laser turret. That's a little far back. Bird tech if you're watching this one. Just remember in the future that a uh, heavy laser... Oh, we cancel it. Oh, we don't. Okay, yeah. A little, a little bit far back for a heavy laser turret, especially for a wreckage that's not really going to be here. Ooh. Also, don't eat other people's commanders unless you've uh, you've you've asked and they've consented in chat. Generally bad practice. But anyway, let's look at the macroscopic scale here. Uh, currently, I think blue team has a slightly better control, although the southern line is actually really exposed. None of these metal extractors are here, in, in here are taken. I think if Pet C sent in a few techs and scouted exactly how little defense there was, we could absolutely crush the purple player and, by proxy, Glass Berserker in one swift maneuver of some really fast units here. Moboro doing a good job of pushing forward and contesting this metal field. This is actually my favorite lane to play on this map, this one that he's playing right here. Because you don't quite have to play on this hill, but you can also push forward and contest this metal spot right here. And if you can hold on to this, it really gives you a nice advantage into the late game, which I think is absolutely phenomenal. This blue army now sandwiched between two reds. The red player and the tan player, Globule. And uh, yeah, a lot of these pawns are caught with their uh, metaphorical pants down. I don't think they literally wear pants. But uh, their metaphorical ones, at the very least, are on the ground as they are suddenly sandwiched between, excuse me, between these two players. Uh, you know, that being said, a few of them did make it through. Oh, there's a brave centurion to mop them up, though. He will stand strong in the dark. In the darkness, he will bind them, and in the darkness, find them. I don't think there's that many in the darknesses in that phrase, but anyway. <laughs> Malboro here, continuing to use this laser turret line as a defensive bastion. Wow, Centurion just takes the hit from those Janices. Doesn't even flinch. Maybe it flinched a little. 23%. That's probably probably about a flinch's worth in robotics terms. What am I even saying? <laughs> Up here, we've also got more bots fighting, clashing, dying. Loads of vehicles as well for Swaglord. A bunch of incisors. Looking to maybe get a little bolder here and try and push forward. Eh, but we're thinking a little bit better of it. Yeah, the southern line, this could really be pushed in so much further than I think Petsy really realizes. Probably used to playing games where the, the players would push all the way out to this line on the forest. Not really aware that actually they could push so much further into this line here. Purple's expansion is really, really slow. We're building way too much defense and we're not focusing as much on expanding outwards as we should. Uh, we probably should bring the command. If we're not going to sacrifice the commander, we should probably bring it forward. Uh, at the very least, we are handing out Tech 2 Constructors, though I do notice that one was handed over. So that's really nicely done by uh, Srovax here. Love to see that teamwork. Remember, if you get T2 out, you might as well hand it to your teammates because uh, they're, they're going to know how to use it. Why were we... What? <laughs> I'm really confused about why this just... Uh, what, what just happened there? That was odd. Ban him. I'm, I'm, I'm really unsure of what Bertik is doing. I, I don't think destroying one max is a uh, call, call for a ban <laughs> right away here. Um, we'll have to keep our eyes out on Bertik and see what they're doing. But uh, that, that was interesting. I'm, I'm not sure how that happened. Odd mistake. At the very least, they do not have any units out on the field, so they are making Bearded Coder and Globule work extra hard. Don't do this, folks. Make sure to get some units out on the field as quick as you can. If you're going to SimCity back here, you at the very least need to SimCity as efficiently as possible. There's actually a really good example here. In, in case, Bertic, you're watching this, just, just come back to your own replay here and study what orange, the orange player is doing. I think this is probably what you're intending to do uh, up here. This is just a slightly more refined build. 
and you might learn a lot from that. But anyway, we'll move on. My bro having their fair share of contest up here. And I was wondering why it looks like this is so slanted against this team, and it's because it is. We have two backline players here that aren't producing units versus uh, uh, basically all frontline players here that are all producing units and moving forward, which means that in in the entire, over the entire field of play, there are more players on the blue team than there are on the red team, which is why there's more breakthroughs for the blue team happening here and why they generally have more of a lead. Pet C could definitely flip the tides of battle here by pushing on, on the purple player, who is the tech center for the blue team. Getting getting in here and starting to uh, tear down a lot of this would be quite nice. We are going for a nice little tech advantage. We, we've almost finished our first fusion reactor. We are thinking about reclaiming our laboratory here, uh, turning that metal into something productive, which is really, really nice to see. We're going for the, the classic build, my favorite build. You build a fusion reactor, you build an uh, energy converter, and then you build a fusion reactor. Now, usually what I would recommend is a fusion reactor, energy converter, two energy converters, another fusion reactor, two more energy converters, and then go into a fusion reactor. That's typically pretty good for uh, balancing your economy out. It's, it's gonna work pretty well. At the very least, passively. That's, that's kind of the ideal for when you uh, want something that you don't really have to micromanage here. A couple of medium tanks break into the back lines here, and they do find a T2 constructor. Ooh, this could be really expensive. Luckily, it would be held together by a bunch of construction turrets patching the damage as quickly as it could be done. The uh, the tank is still at large, though, and it's going to continue to shell away at everything in this back line. If there's no response here, could definitely be quite a pain. Just 3D's economy is looking strong based on map presence here. We have so many gauntlets built up on top of this hill. If there was any place that I appreciate a gauntlet being built on this map, I think that's probably the best, just on top of the hill. At the very least, it's uh, it's a strategic position. We have the radar and the radar jammer as well, so I uh, can't bag on this too much. It's also protecting this geothermal plant, of course, so if there was yeah, if there was a place to pork up, I would definitely say on top of the hill is just as well a place as any. Better a place than any, really. Centurions pumped out and pushed onto the front lines here. Going to be using their laser cannons on their arms in order to uh, push some light through these tanks, try and shut them down. You ever think about that? That's literally what a laser is. It's just like light hitting things so hard that it it evaporates them. Absolutely brutal. Think about like tattoo laser removal. Literally just like smacking the ink particles so hard that it literally evaporates them and breaks them into little pieces. Lasers are uh, lasers are one hell of a drug. <laughs> no, they're just they're they're such an interesting technology. I really can't wait to see what we manage to use them for. Huge artillery falls over here. Not to be confused with gravity falls, although it was a great show. Yep, tanks are in front here. They're gonna they're gonna make sure that this all stays clean as well as some of these heavy laser turrets. A bit overkill for uh, a bunch of ticks, but definitely gonna be great as these pawns melt these down into flashes of hot green laser. Definitely good against these uh, rocket bots as well. A huge front is attempted here, a huge push anyways. Uh, but it does not go very well. It actually rebounds quite heavily, and most of these units are forced to back off. The tanks win this battle tremendously easily. Most of them still looking fine. A few scuffed up, but most of them are pretty healthy. So I think this push is going to be well in the uh, the green player's advantage here. Suddenly, a big push of blue centurions have made it through the front lines, and they're going to start working their way backwards. Globule in a lot of trouble. Vertex economy is still struggling. We have so much metal tied up in T1 solar panels. They're going to have to learn to reclaim those as well as the T1 vehicle labs. So much metal tied up in that as well. We do have gunships coming out here, which is quite nice to see. We are not stalling energy. We are we're actually just meeting our production. So that's really nice. We are starting to upgrade these uh, metal extractors as well. That's really good to see. I would love to see a T2 being given to Globule here. They've been uh, they've been an economic disadvantage this entire time because of the the dual tacking back here. So I think I would I would absolutely love to see it. Um, yeah, they they put it pretty kindly there. <laughs> I'll just let you read that so I don't have to say it out loud and YouTube doesn't flag me for profanity. Uh, we've got wasps in the air here trying to shoot down these Centurion for what it work or for what it's worth rather, uh, doing a good job. Yeah, melting down the Centurion, pretty good, pretty good option here. Centurion can technically fire back, but it's it's barely anything against the uh, the wasp armor plating here. And yeah, so those are mopped up quite nicely. 
Strovex says coming front and indeed they are and we've also got T2 unit production up and running. Wow, we did finish that advanced fusion reactor so we are starting up energy production aplenty. Their team needs it. Yeah, a lot of these players are not stalling on energy so this energy is going to good hands. It's going to help everyone start to spend their metal and convert that energy into, uh, into usable metal. Excited to see how this works out here. I don't think we usually see a lot of teching happening on this map, so it is interesting. I do, I do like to see some change of pace here. These front lines are looking pretty devastating. Sheldon's route on the field by Bob the Builder. Making sure to incorporate a radar jammer and a radar bot so that we can appropriately siege all of this. Absolutely key if we're going to be doing any sort of long-term sieging. We're firing over the hills, and a lot of these are accidentally splashing the units back here, which is working out phenomenally for the yellow player, actually. Oh, the tanks are coming in, though. you got to read this and react to it. You definitely don't want those tanks to jump on top of you, but luckily those tanks are warded off by the waterfall of artillery fire <laughs> coming out from the Sheldon. Now let's take a look at this. Oh, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to see. Several thousand metal in wreckage fields here on the map, and you can see just how important it becomes to reclaim all of it as, as quickly as possible. These T2 hounds are out in the field and they do devastating work, especially against these light turrets, these light uh, laser turrets here. Three shots from a hound in order to take them down, or three hounds firing once, even better. It's gonna melt those down extremely rapidly. Artillery all just dumb firing. I'd love to see this spread out. Just hit A and then right click and drag and you're gonna spread this artillery fire in a nice little line here. Really, really nice. Hounds start to whisk away the, uh, the defensive structures here with a wave of their tails, and it falls behind. Anybody who isn't teched up to T2 now has the luxury of T2 units out on the field, so they're going to be able to tech up without having to worry so much about their teammates not being able to help them. Oh, some wasps in the back line. Sorry, I missed that. But yeah, they started harassing this back line here, and they're doing a phenomenal job. Now, we do have some flak, flak vehicles here. Well, a single flak vehicle, I should say. And it eventually, oh, it's going to be able to take out most of the wasps. This one's scuffed up pretty horrendously. 13% health in this bad boy. The flak truck does catch it, and eventually the wasp goes down. A little bit of damage here in the back line, but I don't think it's too crippling for STACU, Stasu, Staku. These hounds just slowly sieging forward. It's absolutely the right decision to include a radar and a radar jammer bot. I, I can never remember why for... Specifically, whenever I play with them, I always forget to include those. It really does make these so much more effective, and I always forget to include those Radar and Radar Jammer bot. Really, really something I need to improve on in my own game. Petsy is suddenly in a lot of trouble here. Commander has an interesting queue of buildings, and it is found by the, uh, the hounds here. Commander's going to be in a lot of trouble, though. These hounds, they pack quite a punch. Every volley taken off. Maybe 25% health off this commander. Commander doesn't care. He's just shrugging along. And eventually the commander does go down, leaving a nice little crater where once it stood. Are we on the new comm update, by the way? We are on the new comm update. So this is the one where commanders have a little bit more health. Their D-gun doesn't affect other commanders. And they, uh, they're, they're a little bit, a little bit tankier. They're, uh, they're, they're resistant to light laser turrets now. Go check out my video. There's a whole video out. You can go check that out. Uh, spent, spent way too long editing that one together. <laughs> so let me know how you feel about that. These hounds are becoming really devastating in the bottom line, as well as these tanks. This is actually a great move from the uh, glass, glass Berserker here, sending some tanks down. This is what I would call an opportunity path, where you send something along a path that somebody else has opened up in order to continue the harassment here. Very nicely done seeing that open up and then moving the tanks in to continue the aggression down here. Very nicely done. Good teamwork from these two players, showing us what's really possible here. Lighting up a whole bunch of these energy converters, so much of this T1 solar panels. Thank goodness that these are being destroyed. My, my, my heart is never happier than watching T1 solar panels getting absolutely eviscerated. <laughs> Wasps are up in the air, and they're actually pretty good at taking down these tanks. They do fire a AOE rocket that can do damage in a little area. Uh, so they can they can actually shut down big big clusters of tanks like this pretty easily, uh, but yeah, this is really the problem. These hounds have made it well into the back line here, and they're causing quite a ruckus. Blowing up energy converters, laying down a lot of damage on a fusion reactor here, but I don't think they're going to get it. Oh, are they going to get the windmills? 
They do... Eh, they get a few of the windmills, but definitely not as bad as it could have been. Another huge wave of hounds is building here. We've got tons and tons of them streaming out to the front line, as well as some radar and radar jammer bots. We are ecoing up a plenty as well, so this is really nice. The purple player essentially went uncontested, and it all goes back to these two players that were teching up north, because you can see that this player down south, uh, Pet C, had to contest with basically two fronts at once here, this, this light green player and the, uh, the purple player. And because of that, they really didn't have time to focus on pushing in the purple player, and so the purple player was unpunished because of the tech decision for the players up here. Vertic, a little bit confused. I, I, I don't know why they're not producing units. It's actually kind of odd. Must be extremely new to the game. I just picked it up. Somehow they, they have a 17 true skill. I'm not really sure about that. Um, yeah, it's hard for me to hard for me to commentate this because I don't know how, how much criticism I can give this player. Like if they just really just don't know anything about the game, I guess I would just say go watch some of the tutorial videos check back in later feel free to send me a replay some people were uh, upset that i was critiquing some of the uh, lower skill players and their their uh, bad decisions that they made against higher skill players and that's fair right they they, they don't know any better and that's you know that their true skill should reflect that um so i just want to say to all of you those are some nice shots by the mercury by the way uh, i just want to say to anybody who, who's feeling that way uh, feel free to send me your replays. You know, if you feel that I uh, misrepresented you in a game or somebody else sent a replay that you feel misrepresented your skill level, maybe you just had a bad game. That happens. It happen happens to me all the time. I have bad games all, all the time. Uh, feel free to send in a replay and I'll take a look at it. I'm more than happy to. A lot of dead hounds here. A little hound graveyard. Very sad. Very tragic. We have a, a single tank in the back line here. Causing a little bit of a, a little bit of panic, a little bit of a interesting exchange. Oh, this northern line is continuing to push in here. Rise heaven. It sounds like a. It almost sounds Japanese. Like if, if someone tra translated Japanese into an English name. Although that looks like a. Is that the Polish flag? Wow, these flags are like opposite of each other. <laughs> these two people, Burtek and Rise Heaven, are going to be really upset at me. Uh, but anyway, Rise Heaven has a really nice nice army up here. They are the light pink player, so they are they're the the second line here. This this line that I'm tracing with my mouse. There's also a hot pink player for the colorblind among you. Uh, there's also a hot pink player who also has units out, but all of it is T2 vehicles from the Armada faction, so it's really really strong. Going to be very good against the uh, the T2 units here coming out of Green's production facilities. The Great Wall built by Blue. One wall made out of dragon's teeth, the other wall made out of centurions. <laughs> I do like the centurions a bit more. They can fire back. I would, I, you know, it's one thing to climb a wall that's just a wall, but it's another to climb a wall that's blasting you with high energy blasts of photon radiation. Ambassador firing missiles at a commander. That's an interesting interaction. We don't see that very often. Things have suddenly slowed down quite a bit. Nice and nice and calm. I'd love to have some music going. Can we get a can we get a little little music track? Feeding Hope of Victory. Boy, that's a dismal sound name. <laughs> that's a really uh, do doesn't invoke images of success and victory and uh, a, a reason to fight. <laughs> we are getting into those numbers of Sheldon's here from the yellow player, Mr. Bob the Builder. We're getting into that number of Sheldons where it just is absolutely oppressive to start moving your units towards them because a, I mean, literally a waterfall of cannon fire just starts landing on your units and you don't even know what to do about it. This is what's referred to as snowballing for anybody who may, might not be uh, familiar with RTS lingo, if you're new to RTSs in general. Uh, it, it refers to that state in which you have enough units that you can basically one-shot anything. Like, basically any any unit, or at least the strongest units, or just units that you would commonly come up against, uh, you you can essentially just take them down with a single shot. And it's uh, important in these matchups because it means that eventually, like, this army has snowballed to such a point where they are gaining more and more traction with every single building that they kill because of all the metal that it's, uh, it's going to be really difficult to deal with. Really expensive to deal with. That's the real problem. It's not impossible to deal with, but it's going to cost a whole lot of metal. Welders are out now. It's quite nice. We also have some Archangels for fire support. That's really nice since we have seen those wasps up and about in the high heavens, raining down fire from above. Looks like our orange player here is 
leaking a ton of metal, and we are going to start up another advanced fusion reactor. I think it's a great idea. Spend that metal as much as you can here. Improve your own production. Tanks being a huge menace, we've also got tons of these Quakers, the mobile artillery, launching their shots from way, way far in the back line here. Really nice to include some artillery with your tank divisions. It's going to allow you to uh, poke and prod and posture with your tanks while still putting down quite a bit of tremendous firepower on the front lines. Really love to see that. Mixing in starlights here, I think that's a great idea, but you do have to be quite careful. I've highlighted this in other videos, but if we hit spacebar and X at the same time, you can see the explosive radius from these things is actually quite tremendous. Now you're fighting down here, I want to see what's up. Ah, we have a big run-by of units here, that's quite nice. Pat C has realized that all of the units up on the front line were basically all artillery units, and so we've moved everything past. You can see a whole bunch of these hounds have actually gone down here. And we're going to start harassing the back lines. Absolutely phenomenal. Very nicely done. This, uh, I, I won't lie, this definitely could have been a lot quicker. We could have seen this way earlier in the game, and it might have saved Pat C from quite a bit of heartache. Um, but we do have these respots moving in. I would not mind one bit seeing these Resbots resurrect this army and put it back into action here, because this Hound army could easily overrun this little fortification center over here. I mean, it would wipe through this like it was nothing. Always something to think about, right? If you resurrect your enemy's army, is it going to be able to do more damage to them than they can currently, uh, than they can currently handle, right? <laughs> Blue is continuing to grow and grow here. Loads of these wasps out and about on the field. Loads of light anti-air turrets as well to try and shoot them down. It takes quite a bit of work to shoot these things down. At least we have vision now of where all of these uh, all these centers are. There are jammers, so we can't hit them with radar, but we can still see them with line of sight here and there. Using that uh, commander strength to push forward now. Degun some of these centurions. I don't know if it was quite necessary, but it was definitely a good show of strength. And blue is well fortified into the center. However, yellow has a tremendous opportunity path here. Absolutely no defenses along this entire line. Straight back into this base. I guess there's a few defenses. There's a couple of bulls out. Uh, but for an army this big out of Sheldon's, yeah, that, that should be no issue whatsoever. Yellow doing a phenomenal job of reclaiming here. You can see these reclaim fields are getting bigger and bigger by the second. 13,000 in this one right here in the middle of the map, although that is a huge field. I also would hazard a guess that most of it is over here in the expensive side of this map. Uh, there's also 4,000 metal and reclaim down here as well, and wow, look at all those bulls. I love a good bull formation. Those tend to be a really, really powerful unit. Oh, the Centurions and the Hounds moving forward. Trying to push forward into these Mausers, into these Starlights. Oh man, every shot those Mausers put out is so satisfying. You can see just how much damage they do every single time. Absolutely crippling. That being said, these Starlights go down and they do a ton of friendly fire damage as well, so... It's, a, it's a, a tough trick to manage. You can see the commander exploded there, and you can see that some of the units on the outside still survived. Uh, that's because of the new commander update as well, where there's a bit of a damage, well, there's a, a linear damage drop-off when a commander dies. Instead of just the full damage all the way out to the red radius, it sort of drops off after, after a little while. I wonder if that might actually be reflected here in the explosion radius. Uh, no, it doesn't look like it. But yeah, you can see that the, the explosion radius goes out this far, but the actual damage you'd receive anywhere inside this circle varies depending on how far away you are. Again, if you're really curious about the commander update, just go check out the, uh, the video I made. and I'll, I, I break down all the relevant changes. That video, also underneath the description of that video, or in the description of that video, I have the, the link to the actual, the main homepage, the bar homepage. You can go take a look at that as well. Ooh, and Marauders out. Those are quite nice. Absolutely the right decision on a map like this. Big and open and plenty of room for the Marauders to run around. Free range. <laughs> I love some good free range Marauders. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're, they're really good because you can move them past all these defenses. You can really, you, you can slip them between any kind of defensive line. And any light laser turrets, they're just going to shrug off. They'll, they'll melt them down really quickly with their twin Gauss cannons. Twin plasma cannons, rather. Eh, actually, they might be Gauss cannons. Let's take a look. Close quarters Gauss cannon. Yep, these bulls melt this entire army away in seconds. We really need to attack. We need to really stop building these uh, these T1 solar panels, my friend. Oh. So that's that's the cost of at least one fusion reactor, and and then a little more. 
So that's like a fusion reactor and a couple of energy converters in, in T1 solar panels. Why not go for the advanced ones, right? Like, it's 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 way more production, um, less than half the cost. Yeah, I, I think I think we definitely, um, like I said, we're we're watching some noobs learn the game, and that's all well and good. So just some just some notes for everybody who's picking things up. T1 solar panels are your enemy unless you're playing on a no wind map. And even then, they should still be your enemy. You should look at those advanced solar panels a whole lot sooner. Marauders are sent up north to deal with this push here. Uh, Marauders are not the best against a big cluster of units, though. They're definitely much better as, like, a run-by unit. I think I'd like to see a Razorback, maybe a Vanguard. Something in something to that respect. Capable of uh, taking a hit and dealing one just as well. Tigers here on the front line. The bulls beat the, the the bulls beat the tigers. Sounds like a NFL draft. Uh, the, the the bulls do beat the tigers though. They're they're much tankier. You can see 950 metal to build a bull versus oh that tiger died. Well, can we uh, can we have another one so I can highlight this for people? I'll just show you in here. 665. So about about uh, two thirds the price for a tiger. But this, this explains why there's so few units. We're actually teching upwards here. So the advanced fusion reactor comes online, means we have plenty of energy to spare, and our production is going to skyrocket. I would love to see some czars brought out. Maybe a, uh, a bunch more tigers is never the wrong decision here. Just go for 100 of them. Why not? We do have some fat boys here actually pushing forward the front line, making sure to uh, lob that huge projectile. I, let me know how you feel about this, but whenever I see a fat boy fire, I always feel like it's kind of spitting on me. And it just lobs that massive projectile. Ugh. Disgusting. But you love it. You love to see it. <laughs> love to see it on the front lines. Absolutely, absolutely beautiful. If that's what it takes to win the war, God damn it! I guess it's what it takes. Uh, Dragon decides to be a pacifist here. Nope. It picks up its laser cannons and it gets to work. To start carving away a lot of these units here. Blast down the Archangel first. Very nicely done. Yeah, get that anti-air out of the way. Oh, and then take a little breather. Fighting is hard. I don't. I don't blame you. Fighters get free reign over this thing, and eventually it will get blasted down to the ground. Our orange player back here is going mainly for economy. We are still growing the economy, which is quite nice. We're actually behind on energy converters of all things. I think with yeah, with three of these we could do four, eight, twelve. And we currently have... Oh, we have 11, actually. I didn't see these ones up here. Didn't see those until they were highlighted. So actually, we're looking pretty good on energy converters. Uh, especially considering we need energy to produce units as well. So, yeah, actually looking really nice on Orange's part. Uh, <laughs> looks like Burtick decided to leave the game. Uh, Globule has instead taken over. I'd love to see Globule just reclaiming all of this. This is... I mean... This is a good 7,800 metal that could be turned into an advanced fusion reactor. And, a bunch of energy converters and all sorts of stuff. Might be a whole lot more effective here. Likewise, down here, I'd love to see some advanced economy coming out, a tech transition, something, anything. Your neighbor, your next door neighbor is already on T3 units and we're streaming those out in mass, so I think it's about time to uh, look into an investment into higher tier units. I'm gonna speed the game up here a little bit as the front lines are drawn and they have been drawn for a little while. This sort of fortified center from uh, blue has been completely crippled here. We are stepping up to T2 units, though. We have Centurions coming out, and we have the T2 units queued out as well. A bunch of gunslingers, interestingly enough. Ambassadors here to lay down the law. Negotiate, <laughs> negotiate by force, as it were. And the Centurion wall repels the invaders. Nothing quite like 4,000 laser pointers shined in your eye. Uh, this, this poor Titan under quite a bit of stress here. The bull is coming in from an uh, excellent angle here, sweeping up the side of this engagement. A little bit more spread out than the enemy, but that's really all it takes to get that nice, nice AoE spread on these units, and this is really, really nicely done. Also driving right under the Shiva and forcing them to fire on themselves. Really, really potent tactic. Shiva are not afraid of friendly fire. At the very least, they're much less afraid than, than other units. And so they're very prone to shooting at their own legs and causing a tremendous amount of damage. At this point, tons of ticks are running by at the bottom lane here. 
Purple has realized that there's actually no defense for light units down here, and so all the ticks stream by, and they're going to start moving up the map here. There's actually no defense for yellow either, so this, this might start being really, really problematic for the entire red team. Titan's still looking really healthy. Ticks are moving in. I'd love to see these ticks moved around, start targeting these energy converters, the, the build power here, the fusion reactors, anything like that would be really, really nice. We uh, we have a light laser turret over here. That's what's uh, stopping the tick flow at the moment. Oh, if the Shiva comes out, it might fire a rocket or, or a projectile or something and accidentally hit all these, these construction turrets. That'd be really unfortunate for the yellow player. Yeah, I'm really liking this tick stream. I think this was brought out at just the right time here. Uh-oh. We have bombers up in the air, and we all know how that can go. Those bombers are real prone to, uh... <laughs> real prone to hitting their own structures from, from here and there. Advanced Fusion Reactor is almost up. I'm almost scared to see this thing finish, because it's like a ticking time bomb. Yeah, indeed, the bombers start bombing friendly facilities. Fiend's also just accidentally shooting at friendly facilities because they're trying to kill these ticks. That's really the superpower of the tick, is confusing enemy targeting systems. And the bombers, which were set on a patrol path, are now going to start eviscerating enemy bases, or friendly bases, rather, that uh, the ticks happen to be nearby. I'd love to see these ticks gone and parked right next to a uh, advanced fusion reactor, and eventually these bombers are going to blow it to kingdom come. Ticks and bombers doing an excellent job of blowing up this uh, T3 production facility here. The advanced fusion reactor's production has been halted at 98%, and the southern player has been completely wiped off the map. At this point, it's a game of, of sweeping the map here. So purple player definitely in the commanding seat to close out this game. We'll have to see what they do in order to accomplish that. Fighters are out here to shoot down these bombers. Don't know if that's even necessary. The bombers are almost helping. I would love to see these ticks redirected here, though. Force them to go in a better direction. They could definitely run by through the back here and up into the production facilities. Unfortunate whether that we're just going to keep routing in this direction. I wonder if we're producing other stuff. Oh, we're producing nuclear bombers. Wow. Okay. Not the uh, not the the choice that I expected actually, but definitely very potent, very powerful. And if you know that your air force has already done devastating damage to theirs, you might as well bring in a bomber. Why not? Medium tanks and bulls, both working in tandem to tear down the remaining production here for the yellow player. Fusion reactors light up like the night sky on Fourth of July. And uh, all is looking very, very well for the blue team. Titan has stalled on APM here, unfortunately. I think if that were to continue moving, it would be devastating, especially to all of these uh, welders over here. Titan still has plenty of health, 71% health. Oh, Titans have a passive regeneration. I didn't know that. Interesting. This Titan, as well as some marauders, making very light work of a line of defensive turrets here. Very, very good to see. Persecutor giving it its all, but uh, its all is only about 1% per shot. <laughs> Not much at all. Advanced Fusion Reactor in a little bit of trouble. Some bulls do make it into the back line and they start firing on it. Luckily, there's some wasps to clean that up. Oh, now this is dangerous. We do have the, the sharpshooters out and about, and these can get a couple of shots off on that Fusion Reactor. It's going to be long gone. Wasps are hungry to blow up these sharpshooters. I think that's absolutely the right decision. Prioritize these if you can. Melting down the bulls, also a good decision here. Luckily for the red team, I think we have enough air superiority here to keep all of this at bay. I know the purple player does have an air force, so I'd love to see those moved in at this point. This are, these are all gunships, so there's no... Uh, gunships and flying fortresses, I guess. <laughs> so there's no anti-air. Uh, or rather, well, yeah, no, no anti-air. We've got Archangels out to shoot down a lot of this stuff as well, but they're being melted by these gunships just as well. And eventually a lot of these are going to go down. Yeah, I would love to see the planes sent in here. All the fighters were already melted by the Archangels, which is quite nice. The tick stream has been redirected in a different way. I would love to see this constantly updated. Oh, the north has collapsed, though. Sorry I missed it. There was a couple of Thors that managed to break the front lines here. They pushed forward and have completely swept through the northern half of this map. Stasu, or Staku, however you pronounce that, S-T-A-C-U, has been uh, crippled here, down to their last fusion reactor built in the very far corner of the map. 
the uh, the cloaked advanced fusion reactor. <laughs> Not really. Um, yeah, it looks like Swagord as well taps out. His base was completely ran over by a lot of these Thors. Vanguards as well, giving that long-range firepower. Absolutely devastating support. This Thor is looking extremely heavy, so we're going to need to see some extremely healthy, rather. Both of the... Oh, uh, no, this one's pretty scuffed up, actually. But I would love to see a commander brought over here to deal with this. Marlboro moving forward. I think we're prioritizing the wrong unit, though. I think those Thors are going to be much more dangerous. Whoa, the nuclear bombers were sent in. Clustered as all hell, though. But it was worth it. Look at that huge bombing run. Blows up everything in this back line here. All the construction turrets. Only a shame that they didn't manage to get these uh, energy converters here. But aside from that, really, really nice hit. Blows away a big part of that army. I'd love to see these ticks starting to move around here. Uh, yeah, just a just a tip for anybody else out there. If you have ticks and you 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 know you're building a spam of them, be sure to right click and drag to spread out their lines so that they all move in different patterns. This is going to force the unit. I know you can't see the hand movements I do, but it's going to force the units to look left and right and left and right, and continue to swivel their guns back and forth, which is eventually how you're going to sneak units through. We have Resbots on the front lines, too. They are uh, eating up all the corpses, which is really nice. That's going to continue to fund this army here. Really important stuff. Every time these snipers fire, it's melting away this defensive line from Red, which is also quite nice. We have so many Pulsars built in the back lines here to shut down these uh, these pushes from these T3 units. This is just a stalling mechanism. There's not really a great way to, uh, to deal with this. We're going to get the self-destruct timing, right? Oh, just barely missed it. Missed it by two seconds. Really hard to predict that. Really hard indeed. Oh yeah, these these bomber nuclear bombers are without a fighter escort. Fighters start up almost immediately here to try and shoot down these uh, these enemy Nighthawks. High winds versus Nighthawks. Yeah, the nuclear bombers are put down to rest. Juno here to do 1% damage to all these windmills. <laughs> it's odd that the Juno does that. I'm not quite sure why it does. Some some function of the way that it works. Maybe if there's any uh, devs that watch this, you can let me know why the Juno does what it does. Very, very odd structure. Um, I think I think definitely if there was a petition for a redesign, the, the Juno should be at the top of the list. Not that I think the Juno is the wrong, is, is bad. I think it just needs to look differently. Wow, Marlboro, Marlboro, Marlboro's base. <laughs> Completely blown apart here by a Razorback accompanied by bulls. That is such a dangerous army. Those Razorbacks are devastating. Meanwhile, up north here, we have more Thors being blown apart. D-Gun finally goes down, but at what cost? Everything has already been lost. We have a full swing situation here. The whole map has swung. The north has crushed the north, and the south has crushed the south. Uh, we this is a, this is a base race, folks. We're we're in it to win it here. Tons of nukes launched. One, two, three, four, five, six nukes are out. And it looks like we do not have the anti-nuke capabilities to keep those from hitting our base. And boom! There goes all those facilities from Red. Absolutely excellent, wonderful play from Strobex here, wiping away the Red player. Red is out, yeah, I don't think you're wrong about that. I think you, you called it perfectly. Uh, we were starting a Ragnarok here, but it looks like unfortunately that stalled our unit production to a point. We do not have a response to these units in our back line now. At this point, Purple needs to look at this and realize, oh crap, things are things are starting to look dire here. Need to need to start working as fast as I can. These nukes are retargeted here. They are all grouped to the same spot, which is absolutely the right idea. Three nukes are fired, four nukes are fired. Yeah, it looks like they weren't all synced up, which is unfortunate. Uh, because of that, none of the nukes are going to penetrate here, but it does start to drain the anti nuke chambers, which is really important. You can see this one's down to seven. There was another one back here somewhere. Where did it go? Right here. There you can see it, down to nine. So eventually we are going to pierce this anti nuke shield. This one here is also quite nice, contributing one. Yeah, this is a this is a pretty tough one to call. Both teams now completely crippled, um, but still clinging to the last remaining bits of their economy here. Uh, there's not as much economy as I'd like to see in this back player for for the light pink player here. I 
think the oh the economy for orange is really good though. And we do have a bunch of these wasps coming out. Wasps and dragons and all sorts of good stuff. We see more and more nukes launched here as they ready or as they finish up anyways. Line of Razorbacks to stop this Vanguard push. Vanguard getting real bold. <laughs> That's not gonna work. As the Vanguard is shut down. There's another one pushing forward over here. That can be quite dangerous. We don't have a response. More nukes coming out here. It's triggering the production of some anti-nuke bots, actually. That's quite nice. Gonna start thickening our anti-nuke shield. We are down to, let's call it four in that one and ten in this one. So we've still got quite a lot of work to do here. These Razorbacks get jumped on by a bunch of bulls and all of these are clustered so that AOE effect is really kicking in and you can see just how quickly every one of those pink tanks there completely melted. I'd love to see this army swing around and surround this Titan. If the Razorbacks can get us around on a Titan, they can absolutely melt that thing down super, super quickly. Surround damage is insane. Almost doubling your effective damage. You can be really, really, really powerful. I think Resbots is also the next thing that we want to go for here. We can resurrect these, uh... Oh, here we've got one here. He's got the right idea. <laughs> Clear that, and we'll just take a look here. Carefully now, he's a hero. He's the old Spider-Man. The ticks appear to be making slow but steady progress. Sniper is getting one shot at a time off. Wow, that blasted it down from, I think it was 57 down to 7%. Incredible. These sharpshooters are so powerful. That is basically the last of Red's facilities here, wiped off the face of the map. At this point, I would love to see these ticks spread out across the map and then chart it all the way into this back corner. I think that would be really, really nice. Whoa, not sure why we nuked over there. It's a bit uncalled for. This Titan. Kiting a uh, huge contingent of bulls and T1 tanks and all sorts of stuff. You can see that that uh, cannon fire is absolutely overwhelming, though. Eventually, this Titan does hit the floor. Oh, Razorback's got a nice little surround on a bunch of units over here, too. Bunch of bulls going down. Yeah, very nice pick. This is exactly what we need. we need. We need to start sending units around the map as sort of uh, sort of scouting parties, but also as little aggression parties. We, we gotta stop trying to break through this fortified front line. We, we can't let them reinforce that. We gotta force them to distribute their, their units all over the place. I think that's absolutely the right strategic move here. These Razorbacks that we're trying to wrap around do get shut down by a uh, hot pink Thor. Sounds like an epic band name. I feel like I might have said that before. Titan's moving forward as well. Titan versus Titan. A clash of the Titans, if you will. Hold on, gotta screenshot that. <laughs> there we go. Now I can use it in a video, or use it in the thumbnail. <laughs> Fighters are out and about, and they're starting to shoot down a lot of these, uh, a lot of these gunships here. It's nice to see. Orange has enough production to keep up with the fighter fighter production here from Purple. So it's really just a matter of where do we want to put our money. Where your mouth is is probably the right answer there. Tanks are moving forward to accompany the Titans, and this might be a devastating enough push to actually break this line here. Props to Malbora, we're actually starting up a little facility up north here. Very nicely done. Just hiding in our little corner, doing the best that we can. Really nice to see. Ah, uh, big nuclear push here. How many nuke chambers is that? Not you. Well, couldn't count in time. But I would say it's about nine. And we see tons of nukes, or tons of anti-nukes rather, coming out here. Everyone and their mother is firing an anti-nuke. <laughs> Not quite enough to pierce the nuclear shield. Ah, uh, this nuke might have found a good target though. And boom goes the dynamite, knocking out a whole big piece of fortification here for the Hot Pink player. Luckily it didn't wipe out this production center, so the, the Hot Pink Titan is gonna continue eventually. 
I'd love to just see some anti-air units parked back here. Not uh, not fighters, but just you know some uh, some flak flak trolleys or whatever they're called, the flak vehicles. Whoa, tons of nukes right here on this front line. I would love to see those spread out a little bit, but at the very least, we're gonna make a nice little hole in the ground right over here. <laughs> Yep, one more for good measure. There we go, now we know it's dead. Just to be safe. I think we had an anti-nuke over here at one point, but uh, it was thoroughly shot to pieces. The shield does go down. It means that this pulsar is going to be exposed. Uh-oh. This isn't good. Bunch of bulls and a very healthy looking Thor in the back line here. Oh, it's dangerous and close. Oh, and it does get a whole bunch of fusion reactors. It can shoot the advanced fusion reactor too. It just needs one more shot. Oh, and it finds it. Very nicely done. Well placed Thor manages to find its way into the back line here. Still looking relatively healthy too. Do we have any of those nuclear bombers left over? We do have them right over here. Love to see those brought in to deal with this Thor. That would be a tremendous option here. Pulsar will finally deal with that, but that is just one more player down the drain here. Purple and light green are looking pretty desperate. We need to start seeing some units come out and about here. Mar 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 Marlboro moving forward with the commander. D guns a couple of construction bots. And uh, we, are, we are starting up our own production facilities here. We have tons of these res bots here. I'm not sure what our plan is, but I'd love to see him start to res up this uh, advanced fusion reactor, maybe. And we're gonna res together this T2 bot lab here. Very nicely done. So you can see when these are damaged, uh, well, you can only see it for a second there. It was costing a bunch of metal to put the metal back into this, uh, but once you have that done, it only costs energy to res resurrect the thing. Now we get the T2 lab up. We're gonna start upgrading to T2. Very nicely done by Marlboro, uh, as well as Jess 3 d for keeping in this game, continuing the pressure, continuing to scale as well as they can. Another nuclear assault, but those ones do not appear, so I would love to see these nukes spread out here and try and target down this, this army. I think if we had done that, we might be in a really nice chance, really nice standing position here. I believe this was the Titan that was just being chilling down here in the southern part of the map, and it has finally decided to move forward. Tons and tons of these strategic bombers here. The, uh, what is called the Hailstorms, that's right. I know the Armada one is called the Blizzard, but I forget this one sometimes. Anyways, you can see these do a tremendous amount of damage. Super, super explosive. And especially against Titans, because they're so slow moving, they can do really, really nicely. And there it goes. Titan is brought down. More Titans are jumped on top of here. What a titanic battlefield. No more Cortex players, apparently, aside from this air player, <laughs> who has not gone for Juggernauts. Um, but still, I think the Titans are an excellent addition here. Ah, we're going to start resing a Titan up here. That's also quite nice. We have basically an unlimited amount of money, so I'd love to see some eco-scaling back here. Just focus all the way on building up the economy, and uh, we're going to look very nice in the, in the long run. Or just building resbots, just focusing on completely resurrecting everything that you can see. Just make that your job. You're already out of the game in the sense of uh, massive unit production, so you might as well just res things. Uh, if you notice that your tick line is not working, please adjust it. That's the one thing that I have to complain about here for Strobex is I would love to see this tech line spread out like this, and then queued, and then sh and then just shift queued into the uh, the back of the enemy's base. And then you're going to be probing from many, many, many more angles. It's going to force the enemy to react a lot more dynamically here. Sniper's firing on this Titan, blasting it down by a couple percent every shot. What a powerful bot. Absolutely melt away Titans. And down it goes. Shooting away a lot of these bulls too, showing us just how powerful those Titans can be. More and more nukes coming out here. Oh, I think he's made it. A nuke slips through, two of them slip through, and they manage to wipe out all of Hot Pink's production. Ooh, actually, wow, just barely some of these advanced fusion reactors survive. 2%, 5%, 7% on those fusion reactors. Good God, what a nuclear devastation. Bearded Coder says, oh, that is a thing. <laughs> 
tons of bulls here to repel all these T1 bots. This army looked really menacing on the macro scale, but it's actually just a lot of T1 bots. These fat boys are much more menacing. They can certainly lay out quite a lot of firepower, but I like the Serb shooter's chances against them. They can shoot from a whole lot further, and if these units work together, can definitely get some really good work done. A nuke comes out here. Oh, are we aiming for this army? Oh, that would be so nice if this can connect. I think we're gonna get it. And boom, go the fat boys. All of them are scuffed up. Wow, look at all those. Reduced to barely any health left. Really, really nicely done. I love to see that. Now, the fat boys have the... They have the range advantage on these bulls, right? So they're gonna get the first volley. But if the bulls can jump on top of these fat boys before they can fire too many times, it's gonna be absolutely game over for the fat boys. Oh, the bulls stopped, though. Oh, no. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Took 15 nukes. <laughs> We are, we're up to 10. Maybe there's a few I don't see. Yeah, really, really nice stuff. The Titan is up and standing. We have resurrected this uh, advanced fusion reactor, which is quite nice. We're building metal storage for some reason. I'm not sure why we're doing that. We'll just build one or two and then build a battery. It'll be a-okay. I guess if the metal was being wasted anyway, you might as well store it. Loads of fighters pumped out from Orange here. I think they definitely have the aerial supremacy, at least for the time being. But Purple is doing a great job of keeping the contest up. Again, if we're also going to build these these res bots here, the, you can treat these much like the Webbers. If you, if you ever heard me talk about the Webbers, the way I like to do it is I'll uh, pretend these are Webbers, right? I'll, I'll spread them out on my side of the map like this, and then I will, I will shift queue them all throughout the map. Uh, or rather, I will fight command them. So I would, so, sorry, I would, I would move command them, and then I would fight command them, which is going to give me a, a line like this, and then I would fight command them into the enemy's base. And what that's going to do is basically anything along any of those paths, they are going to eat up, devour, and turn into metal for my team, which is absolutely phenomenal. Oh no, some titans have broken into the back lines here. They found this player who was rebuilt. I would cancel the resurrection on this thing. Just in case the Titan finds it. Oh, it's gonna shoot it. Oh, it came back at full health. I'm not sure why that happened. Usually these come back and they're they're scuffed up. Oh, body blocking with that. You see that pro level micro? We're body blocking with the uh, the constructor vehicle here. Very nicely done. Pro level micro. Oh, the Titan does get into the back line though. Everything is retreating. <laughs> yeah, we just get on out of there. Another Titan is here. Oh, they're so threatening. This is interesting. We've got uh, a lot of construction turrets coming up. I'm not sure what the point of that is. Looks like a nuke came down right here. We are trying to nuke this, this army once more. Ah, we've changed the tick pattern here, so that's quite nice to see. Are we going to be able to nuke again? We've got quite a lot of anti-nukes here. Yeah, I think we've got enough engineers in the air to deal with all of this. Oh, it might be close. Oh, it was close. I think maybe one or two more, and that might have actually gotten through. That was really dangerously close there. Everywhere relevant, I can see, is basically completely covered by an anti-nuke of some sort. Ah, uh, <laughs> poor Jess 3D. What did they do wrong? That hurts. That hurts real bad. Well, you can start rebuilding, but it feels pretty late at this point. <laughs> as far as end conditions go, we are finally seeing a bit of spam coming out of the hot pink player here. Uh, aside from that, though, we also have a ton of fighters moving forward. These fighters are gr grouped up, though. A single Mercury shot might be absolutely devastating to these. If they, if they dip into this radius here... Oh yeah, those Mercuries. You gotta be really careful. Any one of these clusters of five or six of these uh, these these little bots here would be really dangerous. Wow, we are sick and tired of this army posturing in the middle of the map. Ooh, we wipe it off the face of the map. Those are clustered so close together. Again, I would really love to see them spread out, but uh, who can who can who can hardly not adore the uh, nuclear devastation there? 
We're sending a huge army up north. I think this is absolutely the right move. Start moving units around the map in interesting patterns. Don't focus so much on one spot. We're turtling up like crazy here. Just building a ton of landmines, ton of these uh, pop-up plasma turrets here. Whatever we can. Can these build landmines? Is that what's is that what's cued to build these? It is what it is. Um, oh yeah, they can build the medium mines. Look at that. We've got a ton of gunships heading over to a friendly base. I'm not sure what we're planning to do with these. Maybe we're going to hand them over. It's always an option. Mar Marlboro is doing an excellent job of making sure to keep this base safe. Oh, and they even got an anti-nuke up to deal with any nuclear threats. Really nicely done. Suddenly, the uh, red team here is realizing, oh crap, there's actually somebody up there. <laughs> that nuke did not go where we thought it was going to go. That could be a problem. Another another nuclear launch here. It's kind of not targeting anything super critical. Although it would be really nice if it could wipe away any defenses on this front line here. Hopefully this collides before the uh, <laughs> before the units get here. And indeed it will. Wipes open a big path, at the very least taking out a long-range plasma cannon, so that's quite nice. This is all light defense, so this this push is actually looking really dangerous here. If this Thor isn't redirected, this could be really dangerous. We've also got a Titan up here, this needs to head up north as well. It is going to start moving up there to try and deal with this threat, but the problem might just be that there's too much here to stop quick enough. We'll have to see. Meanwhile, down south... Huge push to blitzes. There's bulls coming in, but are they going to be enough? It is tons of bulls, and wow, look at the devastation. Those bulls are absolutely ridiculous. Wiping away the blitzes like it's nothing. Very nicely done. Just in the nick of time, moving the units right into the specifically right place here. Absolutely phenomenal. Cutting off that entire push before it can make way. That could have been entirely crippling to the southern side here, and we just, we responded absolutely perfectly. Very well done there by our uh, light green player, Glass Berserker. Marlboro's commander is actually resurrected here, and it could be used to kill some of these titans. Uh, for me, for my, either way, uh, has uh, d decided to uh, stick the commander right there as well, so that can be moved up to deal with these. Ah, uh, the bulls have continued to push through here. A lot of these have decided to focus down a Thor that was in the way over here. Now, luckily, this survives with 1% health. Very, very lucky that. A bunch of bulls are still in the back line here, though. It won't take much for them to hit some of this critical infrastructure, but it looks like there's going to be enough gunships to, excuse me, to uh, mop all this up here. Very nicely done. Too much action. I have to keep bouncing back and forth. I do apologize. Look at these look at these titans clashing head to head over here. The Thors are set up to stop them. Every single shot from these Thors melts these down. Wow, have you ever seen titans melt so fast? Thors do pretty good against titans. You need a lot of them, but uh, they definitely can melt them really well. They're so tanky. Pulsars everywhere we go. Melting down these Titans. Most of them are dead, but there's still a few left remaining. This Pulsar is doing good work trying to uh, beam this one down as, as well as it can here. Several percent off with every attack that it does. Gunships as well, being a nuisance here, and eventually the Titan does go down. Likewise, over here, this Titan is stopped, and that is a lot of metal left out on the field. I'd love to see some res bots picking all these up. You can already see him working hard here. Yeah, get those units back up, and you're going to have a phenomenal time. Whoa, look at that. All those scouting planes taken out by just a few of these Mercury missiles. Uh-oh. Oh, this is not good. Oh, this is so not good. Ooh, that hurts. Melthorn's entire gunship army is queued to the same spot. He doesn't realize those Mercury missiles. Oh, no. As soon as this charges, it's going to be devastation right here. Oh, come on. Fire at these. <laughs> oh, no. All those gunships are down. 
that hurts so badly. Those gunships were all that they had as far as a quick response team went for dealing with any kind of unit pressure. Oh, that hurts so much. Got a gantry going again, bottom left corner. Uh, <laughs> trying to uh, trying to dissuade the army from going over there. Some sort of a, a mental mental warfare here. <laughs> Look at this economy center. Holy crap. We can't even produce fast enough. Production, production, production. Build some more T2 labs. Build some more T, uh, T1 labs. Remember, if you are uh, if you if you have so much production, ooh, that was a nice hit. That does wipe away Swa Roy's uh, T3 unit production, so that's going to be expensive to replace. If you're hitting a, a big e-waste problem here where you can't even spend all the resources that you have, consider upgrading these spam factories to T2. Get some Webers out on the field. Get some uh, Sprinters out on the field. Always remember that there are more expensive options that are just all around better. And if you're wasting the metal anyways, you might as well waste it on something effective. Or slightly more effective. Loads of gunships out now. They're here and they're ready to party. Blasting down these Titans with great efficiency. <laughs> we don't see Roughnecks all too often, but I guess when you use them in the right context, they can be quite powerful. Quite powerful indeed. Marlboro has done an excellent job of calling back into this game. We were already up to multiple advanced fusion reactors. We've got the commander, we've got walls, we've got all of these pop up plasma uh, artillery here. Walls of units, all sorts of good stuff. Really, really nicely done. Just as well, Just 3D for sticking into this game, resurrecting as much as we can, and making sure to crawl out as much value as we possibly can from this map here. I just noticed the floor outside is lava, by the way. <laughs> That's quite interesting. Hadn't noticed that before. I wonder if the uh, the lobby had the command set to turn all the uh, ocean to lava. Ooh, Titan moving forward here. Wow, that's a lot of bulwarks, though. I'd be surprised if this many bulwarks doesn't blast this down almost immediately. Three shots, we're down to 85%. Yeah, this should be light work for this much static defense. Titan stands bold. It's probably going to burst down a lot of it, though. Well, by a lot of it, I mean one of it. <laughs> Getting one bulwark per Titan, I mean, eventually you're going to trade there. But uh, not not ideally the trade that you're looking for. Ooh, lots of, lots of Thors moving forward here. They're getting into a formation. These could definitely be really devastating. Strovex asking for a Cortex Constructor. I wonder if we're going to go for Juggernauts. I think that's an absolute, absolutely wonderful idea here. A single nuke was launched. A single anti-nuke was sent to meet it. There's just only a single anti-nuke field back here, by the way. So this might be a vulnerability that you could exploit if you manage to land nukes in that one anti-nuke field, of course. We also have Junos out on the field, making these ticks basically unusable. And we're also just sending these Lazarus in a, uh, a pattern where they're, they've are they already eaten up all the metal in, in the field here. I guess these ones are getting a new buffet of ticks. <laughs> Tons of these Blitzes are now out. A Ragnarok is even up, and we haven't used that either. I guess it doesn't really have anything within range here. Uh, actually, I take that back. It could absolutely wipe away Globule's base here. That's for sure. Whoa, sorry about those frames. Looks like about four million bombers just dropped their payload on top of these Thors here. I'm trying to see exactly how many of these there are. 62 of them. Dear God. <laughs> wow. Well, apparently it takes 62 bombers to blow up a Thor in one hit. Might be more, or uh, rather it might be less, but uh, 62 is a safe number to go for. They are getting shot out of the sky pretty quickly though by all these fighters. Eventually, three Thors remain. They're gonna start working on the facilities right here. Oh, this is an exposed point. There's not really anything out to protect at this point. Oh, except for a commander. We could absolutely degun all these. Globule does not realize, doesn't notice the commander is sitting right next to all these tanks. Looks like Bearded, Bearded Coder did notice. Oh, but Globule did not. So the commander goes down. The last hope of degunning these uh, these tanks before they get into the production cycle here. Things are not looking good. 
The construction turrets working on this door are shot down, so it will not come out in time. Advanced fusion reactor in a little bit of trouble here. Goes up in flames, wipes away all of Globule's production. And now we are set back down to the T1 era. These stores are really good against these blitzes too, wiping those away with no problems. Globule in a whole lot of trouble. Really liking the airplay here from the uh, from the purple player. Looks like this Ragnarok is finally doing some work. Working on taking down some of the stuff over here. It's It appears to just be auto-firing on whatever it can in range. Cannon range. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, these stores. Absolutely devastating back here. And the economy growth has not been near, anywhere near what uh, Scorex has... Or uh, Srovex, sorry, has uh, been able to achieve back here. You can see just how many... Just how many uh, advanced fusion reactors that we built back here, as well as these advanced energy converters. Uh, the nukes were thinking about launching. Or did they launch already? No, I don't think they've launched already. I think they were thinking about launching already. This game was pain. <laughs> the blue army marches forward. Do we have enough to deal with this? I mean, there's tons of T3 units out, but you, you need a, a huge array of them, right? Thors are really good because they have that spread out attack. Uh, but when you have this many bulls, they really can melt stuff down so quickly. Indirect fire weapons, so they can they can all fire over the top of each other, uh, which makes them really effective even when they're clustered up like this. A lot of anti-air is being taken down here in this push as well, and it looks like after seeing Blue's army, they decide that uh, it's not worth it. Oh, a nuke goes down right here as well. Did they get the commander or did they forfeit? Oh, it might have been a commander snipe, actually. Wow, really nicely done. Huge props to Srovex. Very, very nice play with this economy. Absolutely wild. Beyond all reason, one might even say. <laughs> yeah, produce the most units. Uh, let's see. 100,000 million. 348 million resources. 3.48. Wow. That is a lot. And uh, I... Yeah, you can see the eco scaling. Miles and miles above every single other player in this game. Surprisingly, look at Blue managing to actually claw themselves back up into this game. Really nicely done. Thank you so much for watching. This was quite a long one, and I hope you enjoyed. I hope you'll uh, share this one around. Hope you got a good kick out of it. And I will see you in the next video.